Hello. Today I thought I'll briefly talk about how to read a scholarly book, since so many of us have to read them for our work. But uh, I think it's uh, crucial to have a plan or at least have some basic information about how to go about reading scholarly books, because it is a different kind of reading. So most of what I'll be sharing, of course, is based in my own experiences and is not necessarily based in any of research on how to read scholarly books. And I hope this information is going to be useful to you. So the most important thing that works for me is, is to always read the introduction. So pretty much all scholarly books either have a preface or an introduction or both. And I highly rec recommend that you should read it. And there is a reason for it, because in the introduction, the author is going to lay out as to what is the main question that they are dealing with, who are they responding to, whose work they are responding to or are building upon. And then they will also give in the introduction their plan. You know, what are they going to start with? What do they cover in chapter one and chapter two? So when you read the introduction carefully, you will know exactly how the book is organized. Another important thing about the introductions in scholarly books is that the author is going to explain their theory or the philosophy behind the book. So they are going to give you certain clues about which concepts are they employing, how are they reading those concepts in opposition to what or in difference to others reading, and then how do those concepts, philosophical, theoretical, figure within the larger discussion in the book. So reading the introduction, therefore, is crucial to understanding the intent of the book, the intent of the author, and the method through which the author reaches his or her conclusions. Now, while you're reading the book, the most important thing is annotate. Okay, highlight and annotate your books. I don't know if you can see my annotations, but this is my copy of the location of culture. And you can see that the book is highly highlighted. So I'm only highlighting the parts that I think need further thought or that are crucial to my understanding each chapter's argument. And then I'm putting notes on the side in the margins not necessarily the notes that explain my highlight, but they gave me a hint, you know, what is it that is being discussed on this page and continuation of previous discussion. Also, sometimes giving myself a note at the bottom that tells me, read this and this, because somehow while reading something on a page, I realize that there is something that the author mentions that I further need to explore. So annotations can be about what you've just read, what you've understood, what you need to read. All of these would then help you look back at your reading and guide you to your earlier reading and what kind of notes or crumbs you had left for yourself to follow. But annotations are extremely important. And they're also important when you teach, because if you still have the same book that you yourself have read, then these annotations kind of become your teaching notes, and they also become your research notes. And uh, another important thing that these annotations would tell you is when you clearly mark you know, what the author is citing, who is he or she responding to, right? Whose argument are they either refuting or building on. So it has a sort of a regressive effect. If you have not read that person, then you annotate the book and mention there, I need to go and read it. So what will happen is, while you're reading the book, you are learning a new argument about a topic, but then you're also learning the backstory by going back and reading the authors that the current author is responding to or challenging or citing in his or her work. That's very important. Then this is what I do at the e end of each chapter. Now each chapter that you've read has your page by page annotations and highlights. But at the end of e each chapter within the book, you know, 
I make final notes. What was discussed in the chapters? Were there any new terms that I encountered in that chapter? Then I look up those terms and sometimes write the definitions of them in the conclusion of a chapter. So what that does is that by the time I finish reading a book, not only do I have page by page notes and annotations, I also have sort of chapter summaries. Now I encourage my students to write on the books. But of course, you have to keep in mind that in order to do that, you can only do that on a book that you own. If it's a library book, of course, you can't annotate or write on it. But you can use sticky notes or use a separate notebook to keep your notes. But if the book is your own, don't be afraid of writing on it because you're going to keep it as a scholar and use it in the future. Do not skip any words that you are not sure what they mean within the context of a chapter or a paragraph. Look up important words. Look up the words that you have a little bit of a doubt about. And then for your future reference, post them under the page, right? Write down the word, give yourself a hint, and look up the meaning because that would slowly increase your academic and scholarly vocabulary. And you will be able to read the usage of the term or the word in context in, in a book. So please look up important words as they appear, highlight them, look them up, jot down the meanings. And that's one of the best ways to learn new vocabularies and master them. And after you have read the book, while you're reading the book, Check the work cited okay, of a book. Who is the author citing? Because these are probably important people in your field. Uh, and I didn't mention it earlier, but you do read their end notes and footnotes because that's where you'll find additional information. So work cited would give you ideas about you know, who are the people in your field that this author has read and incorporated in his or her writing. And then the notes would help you grasp any further explanations that they gave that are not provided within the text. And check the index. You know, most of us don't do that, but just skim through the index because index is usually an index of important terms used in a book. And that would roughly give you an idea of, oh, OK, if I need to know what hybridity is, here are the page numbers where Baba discusses it, right? Cultural difference, page 34 to 38, right? That way, if you have missed an important term, the index would kind of highlight for you that that is an important term. That's why it's included in the index of the book. And it will send you back to those page numbers to take another look at some important concepts that you might have missed in your first reading. Then, most important, after you've read a book or while you're reading it, start preparing a list of what you need to read. Now, in a regressive way, you will probably want to read some of the major works that the author is responding to or is building upon. But also, what new sub, you know, books might have come out after this book got published. Right. So start making a list of what is there for you to read. Right. And th those lists will be useful for your future growth as a scholar. So overall, just to sum up, a scholarly book requires a different kind of reading. You need to annotate the book, make notes, right? look up the concepts that the author uses. Read their introduction carefully because the introduction will give you an idea of what the book is about, how it is organized, what theory the author is using. Then throughout, annotate the book, put down notes in the margins, and at, ev at the end of every chapter, get you give yourself a summary to use for future references. And as you read the book, look up the important terms, the words that you encounter that are new to you, and that will build your scholarly vocabulary. And in the end, do take a look at their work cited and their end notes, right? And take a look at the index to see if you've missed any important term in a scholarly book. So generally speaking, these are some of my practices and ideas about 
how to read a scholarly book. The same principles would probably apply to reading uh, an academic scholarly article as well. I hope uh, this has been useful to you. And if you have any questions, please do post them in the comment section. And if you like whatever I offer on this channel, please do subscribe. And so thank you so much for today. And I will see you next time.